RPGs are a staple genre for any retro gamer, especially on the Game Boy. But the constant leveling and grinding of these games can become very tedious, especially when you're playing them for the third, fourth, or even fifth time. Today I'm going to show you how you can overclock your Game Boy and bring it up to speed for the new decade. So let's get right into this mod by going over the tools you're gonna to need first. So first of all, you're gonna need a soldering iron, gonna need a rotary tool, a hot glue gun, a bit of wire, wire stripper, screwdriver, a file set, a little switch, and this oscillator crystal. All right, so the first thing we have to do is take our Game Boy apart. Remove the screws inside the battery door. So we're just gonna be focusing on the back half for now. So you can set the front half of the Game Boy aside for later. So since the crystal is on the left side of the Game Boy, we're gonna run the wires for it down the side here. So it makes the most sense to put the switch right here, right next to the DC in. So what I'm gonna do is the switch is about the same size as where it says DC to where it says 3V. So I'm basically just gonna color in a little bit just so I have a mark where to drill from DC to V. Something like that. So I'm basically going to be drilling out a hole that's a little bit smaller than the switch so then I can take the file in and clean it up so that it fits perfectly. looks pretty close. Yeah. Okay, that fits, that's pretty close. Now we have this chunky looking hole, so I'm gonna clean it up with the file set. It ended up being, needing to be bigger than uh, I thought it was gonna need to be, so. I almost just want to get it so that I have to like force it in a little bit so I know it's super snug. Get the pin a little bit. I actually think it's pretty good in there. Yep, switches. That didn't take me very long at all. Now I just got to heat up my hot glue gun and then we'll, we'll glue it in place. So before I glue the switch into the shell, I like to take the pins and bend them up a little bit just so they're a little bit more out of the way of the glue. Then I go ahead and take it and stick it in. So it just barely sits in evenly, but not pushed in all the way. Cause we're gonna put glue right in there and then we're gonna push it in. Just take your hot glue gun. 
Kind of put a little bit of glue on the top of it. And then we're gonna take it and push it in so that it's flush on the outside so it's seamless. Kind of hold that in place until it dries up and then we'll put some more glue. So we're gonna get a little bit more glue underneath just so we make sure it doesn't move. So now that that's set in, we're just gonna set this aside and let that glue dry and harden up and we're gonna move to the other half of our Game Boy. All right, so here's our Game Boy. Here is the crystal that we were talking about earlier. Now, like I said, this is an eight megahertz crystal and we're going to be wiring it to the switch, which is going to be wired to the 12 megahertz crystal. So there are two pins on either side of the crystal. You can see right here. I'm gonna use these pins on the left side of the back. So these two right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder a wire to the top one and solder a wire to the bottom one. And then we're gonna run them down the side to where the switch is going to be. So first things first, take two pieces of wire that are long enough. Just go ahead and solder them in. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of flux on here just to make things a little bit easier. And then we're gonna take a little bit of solder. A little bit of solder on that pin. All right, cool. So I like to take the first wire on the bottom and run it down underneath that one's good and then the other one I like to do from the top and then run it above so that they're not touching each other And then this one I'll run down the side like that. So I'll take these two wires. This one's gonna go. And I tuck them in this little slot right here next to the cartridge. Pull that through. Don't get it wrapped up in the volume wheel. That should be good. And then this one as well. Pull that through. Now to make sure these are off to the side enough so that they're not gonna be in the way of anything. That looks pretty good right there. So this is where the crystal comes in. So basically what we're going to do is we're gonna solder one of these wires that are connected to this crystal to one of the legs then we're gonna take this little piece of wire and this is gonna go on the other leg. That's gonna to solder to the switch. And then this wire that's left is gonna to solder to the switch. So first things first, we'll go ahead and solder one of these legs in. So go ahead and bring in your other half. I'm going to solder the smaller piece of wire to the middle leg on the switch. other wire that's going to the crystal is going to go into the leg on the switch. And then the last thing we have to do is 
solder this wire that's attached to the middle leg on the switch into the last leg that's left on the crystal that we're installing. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the crystal in a little bit of tape, just so it doesn't short or anything like that. So you should be able to just kind of fold it back together. Slowly, making sure that stays in the little pocket. Mine's taped down a little bit, just to keep it in place. All right, everything should fit pretty snug without forcing. But we'll get it better situated after we test it. So go ahead and pop the batteries in. And then turn it on. Now listen. So you can notice right away that it like starts up a lot quicker. So we know we did it right. And if you, when you first turn it on, it doesn't go, turn it off and flick the switch back the other way and then try it out. So we know ours works. So we're gonna go ahead and screw everything back together and throw a game in it. So it works. And it'll be now running at 1.5 times speed whenever this switch is flicked on. And the switch is nice because if you wanna play like a game like Tetris or something, you can turn the switch off and not have to worry about blocks falling at an extremely fast speed. Now something funny that I did notice about this, when I originally did this mod for this video, I installed a 16 megahertz crystal. And I usually install 16 megahertz crystals with these Game Boys when I put rechargeable battery mods in them. And the lithium ion batteries that I use are 3.7 volts while running two AA batteries is only three volts. So I don't know if it has something to do with the voltage of the batteries, but when the AA's were in here, I could not get the 16 megahertz crystal to work. I don't know if I was just doing something wrong, but I tried it and tried it. And then when I put the 12 megahertz crystal in, it ran perfectly fine. So a little something to remember if you want to go up to 16, you're going to need to have a rechargeable battery mod, from my experience. When it comes to backlit modded Game Boy Colors, there are actually a couple screens that will not work with this from what I've noticed. So, of course, the original screen will work. The McWill LCD, the drop-in LCD, that one works perfectly fine. I didn't have any issues with that one. The cheaper Chinese LCDs, these ones are probably the worst ones to use for this mod because like this screen is completely unplayable. It just like does crazy stuff. It's just all over the place. You can't even see what's going on. It like splits the screen in half. The Freckle Shack screen, which I know was pretty popular for a while. This screen kind of works, but it leaves like an image burn whenever you pause the game. Super weird. Now my favorite screen to install with any Game Boy Color really is the new IPS screen. This screen I just feel like looks the best out of all the other options. Pretty easy to install and it will work with the overclock mod. This is one of my favorite Game Boy mods to do, especially when it's combined with a rechargeable battery. When I play Game Boy games now, it's pretty much always on an overclock Game Boy. If you have any questions about anything I did in this video, feel free to drop them in the comments section down below. And let me know what Game Boy mods you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.